Can a young puppy willingly disengage from a major distraction like a person approaching them and talking to them or ducks flapping around within a few feet of the puppy? What if you're 20 feet behind the puppy, not even in their field of vision? Yes, yes, they absolutely can. And today I'm going to tell you how you can achieve these same results with your puppy. So today I strapped on a GoPro so that you can get a first person view of how I train a service dog prospect to make good decisions, whether they're distracted by people or livestock or other dogs in a way that doesn't involve me having to constantly nag them or tell them to leave it all the time or use obedience heavily as a management tool. Good decision-making for a service dog is crucial, especially in the event where a handler might have a health event or isn't able to offer a lot of support and the dog has to make decisions on their own. I wanna develop a dog that has excellent problem-solving skills and handler engagement, even around major distractions. And that all starts with small challenges and small distractions in their daily lives. So without further ado, let's roll the tape. In this video, you're gonna see two things of note. The first is a short clip of how I manage a long line safely around a person who's looking to approach my puppy, as well as how I handle a major distraction of livestock and ducks that four month old Maeve is interested in. But first, a little bit of background. In this video, Maeve and I are out on a long line walk in the rain because, well, New England weather. I'm letting her decompress and meeting her energy needs before heading back to my house for a training session. So why do I have Maeve? Well, Maeve is being raised by my colleague, Casey, and Casey and I work together often. So I'm giving Casey, her trainer, a few hours off because raising a puppy is hard work and sometimes it's just nice to have a little break. Casey will be taking my pup for a few day training session when he's young as well, because I also think it's really important for young dogs to learn to work for other handlers. If I'm incapacitated for whatever reason, I want my dog to easily be able to switch handlers and exposure to this when they're young is really helpful. And that goes for service dog prospects, but also sport and pet dogs. Even though Whip wasn't originally intended for service work, I still had her go for day training sessions about once every other week for a few months after I got her with different trainers. This broadens her handling and training experiences. So I have Mae for the day and I'm going to exercise her first. Give her a little bit of rest and then go home and do some training. Now I mentioned before that I don't want to rely on obedience to micromanage my dog. But I'm not saying that teaching your dog obedience behaviors isn't important. It definitely is. We want our dog to be able to respond reliably to cues. In fact, you'll see me using a let's go cue in this video to prompt Maeve to move along with me on cue. But when I'm working to train a service dog, I also wanna foster and promote good decision-making without having to tell my dog exactly what to do at all times or rely on heavy obedience to keep them out of trouble. Because here's the thing, Sometimes if you're in a health crisis or just having an off day, you're not going to be able to give the cues to tell the dog exactly what they need to do in that particular moment. So to accomplish this type of good decision-making and redirection to handler around distractions, I reinforce heavily for offered attention. If you saw my recent day in the life video, you'll actually see Maeve getting reinforced for looking at me around distractions. I'm not calling her name, making kissy noises, anything. I simply allow her to look at the thing, and then when she looks away and back at me, I mark and reward. If you want to learn more about how I structure a public training outing like this one, check out September's Patreon deep dive on what I train when I'm out with a 12-week-old puppy. Because by doing this offered attention exercise consistently, you'll find that over time, you'll have a dog that sees distractions as a cue for disengagement with the distraction and re-engagement with handler. And that process will be faster and faster the more you practice. So Maeve has had a lot of reinforcement for this type of offered attention prior to the events you're about to see. And before we get to the offered attention example, let's talk about long lines. I love a good long line, always attached to a non-restrictive harness. The long line Maeve is on is about a 30 foot long, lightweight biothane line, which I'll link to down in the description. I find this to be a great length for giving a puppy freedom and to minimize pulling. Because when a puppy is this young, they're not going to have their loose leash walking skills completely polished yet, and certainly not for long distances. And even if they did, I want to give them a safe way to practice freedom and off-leash skills with the safety of a long line in case I need it. When we think about any leash, we want to think about it like a seatbelt in a car. It's a seatbelt and not a steering wheel. 
It's there if we need to use it for an unexpected event, but it's not there to maneuver the dog or drag them in the direction we want. So here you'll see we come upon a man working in the barn who starts talking and coming towards Maeve. Assessing the situation, I see that this is going to be a tough one for Maeve to ignore. So how do I respond? I begin to loop up my long line. Notice how I don't wrap it around my wrist, which could become dangerous. I want to shorten it enough that if she doesn't make a good decision, she isn't able to run up and say hi to the man. But I don't tighten it, as I want to give her the freedom to make good choices without leash pressure. Now because the man is getting closer, instead of waiting for Maeve to disengage on her own, I decide to give her a cue that means let's go. In fact, the cue is let's go. It's actually something we were working on very briefly during the walk without these types of major distractions around. To practice, I would give her the let's go cue and then change directions to encourage her to follow along with me, without having to actually recall to me, as overusing a recall can make it less reliable out in a distracting environment. So let's go isn't a proofed cue here, and it's more of a suggestion and a verbal connection with Maeve than anything else at this point. Now in this particular instance, yes, my cueing to her could definitely have been cleaner, but overall, I'm pretty pleased with this outcome. After engaging with her verbally, she disengaged and ran back over to me, which I immediately reinforced. Now we'll head a little further down, where you can see an example of me choosing to wait for her to voluntarily disengage without a verbal cue. Yes! Good girl! Awesome! Good job! Let's go! That was so fabulous! Yeah! What a fabulous animal! I know, they just made funny noises. Yes! Good job! Let's go! Just doing? Yeah, good girl! Oh, that's so good! Oh, that's so good! Let's go this way! <laughs> Yay! Good job! Awesome work! Let's go! <laughs> now let's play through that again while we discuss an important question. Why did I choose to verbally cue her with the man, but not with the ducks? Here's why. The man was continuing to approach. I could assume that the difficulty level her Maeve was going to continue to increase as he continued to close the gap. So I called her to continue on with me while she was under threshold and able to follow my cue. However, with the ducks, the ducks are stagnant. They're not going to approach Maeve any further, and they're also protected by a fence. So this gives me a great opportunity for her to choose to disengage with the distraction. It's really a matter of distraction level. The ducks are a captive audience and they're not going to become increasingly more distracting. And so I give her the space to work it out on her own. And she does. Now she does go back and look a few times, but then without help, she disengages again and follows me. I don't mind her exploring her environment at this stage in the game. We want her to know that all these things exist, and then I'll be right there to reward her when she makes desirable choices, increasing the likelihood that she'll make more good choices in the future. What a good girl. After our decompression walk, she had a bit of a tether nap, and then we were ready for some training. Specifically, I was working on generalizing her stay behavior and some name recognition games in a new environment. So if you want to see how I train the beginning steps of a stay to a young puppy, as well as this name recognition game, Head on over to patreon.com slash doggyu for that unedited training footage where I explain the process. Oh, and hey, if you found this helpful and want to see more, be sure to boop that like button. You all have an awesome day and happy training.